touching this vision here is an honest ghost. That let me tell you for your desire to know what is between us, or master of this domain. And now, good friends, as you are good friends, scholars and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is my lord? We will. Never make known what you have seen to match. My lord, we will not. Nay, but sweat. In faith, my lord, not I. Nor I, my lord, in faith. Upon my sword. My lord, we have sworn already. Indeed, upon my sword indeed. Swear. Ah, ha, boy, say it thou so. Art thou there, Jew Penny? Come on, you hear this fellow in the cellar rich. Consent to swear. Swear. Oh, yeah, you think? Then we'll shift our grounds. Come hither, gentlemen, and lay your hands again upon my sword. Never to speak of this that you have heard. Swear by my sword. Swear. Oh, well said, old Moore. Can't just work there so fast. A worthy pioneer once removed, good friends. Oh, yeah, this is but wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than I dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, here as before. Never so help you mercy, how strange or odd soever I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think me to put an antic disposition on, that you at such times, seeing me, never shall, with arms in compass or this head shape, or by pronouncing some doubtful phrase, as well, well, we know, or we could, but if we would, or there be, and if there might, or we list to speak, or such ambiguous giving out to note that you know aught of me, this not to do, so grace and mercy, your most need help you swear. Swear! Rest, rest, perturbed spirit. So, gentlemen, with all my love, I commend me to you, and what such poor man as Hamlet is may do, to express his love and friending to you, God willing, shall not laugh. Let us go on together. And still your fingers upon your lips, I pray. Oh, the time is out to join to curse, spite that I was ever born to set it right. Nay, come. Let's go together. And scene. Good. Nice to work, you guys. Good. <laughs> um, come on down and just sit on the edge of the deck here, you four. Just a sec. Um, so how was Tabitha to work with? A lot of fun. Fun? Yeah. Fun. How did she make it fun? Just giving us the chance to pick out our costume. And ex expressive voice levels. She let you guys kind of play around a lot with stuff like that, or mm -hmm. was she a, a dictator director, or was she a <laughs> no, let's she, play a game together director? She was like a real. She was really good. So I, kind of thing I really liked about it was that she allowed us to um, openly share ideas and what we think would work, and it wasn't just like this is my idea. This is how I want to do it my way or get out. She wasn't like that. And my way or the highway. <laughs> yeah. And we would like try things, like you know, like if we had a suggestion, we would try it, and if it didn't work, which happened occasionally, then we'd switch it up. We had a Facebook page. I mean, it was just fun, and she was constantly in contact with us, like in a good way. Always, like there would be no way to forget, even if you forgot or whatever, she'd remind you. And but it was fun and really supportive. Like you guys did great, and just uh, I know I felt really supported. Like oh, I can totally do this. This is great. Horatio Smith us are actually a last minute. Suggestion yesterday, or like, yes, we'll do it. It's so Horatio. <laughs> <laughs> Horatio, exactly. Uh, so that was good. She let you guys have input into what was going on, and yeah. she let you be a part of the process. And I thought it was cool how like um, it wasn't it wasn't just like second year actors who got the chance to be an actor. Like I'm a first year, first time reading this scene ever. No, and, Not and like today, but, you know. Well, and the first thing I, I should say is I thank you guys for volunteering for doing this. It's good experience, and it's good for Tabitha. It's good for you guys, and, and, and it, there is no distinction between first or fourth year even as far as acting goes. I mean, you, you, it's just experience, and the more yeah. experience you get, the better, even doing stuff like this. Um, I was saying to the class, you know, if you go somewhere like you, Vic, you're going to spend all day in classes and then the rest of your day is spent in three or four different, you'll go from one directing rehearsal at 3.30 and then you'll go across the theater and you'll be in another directing scene. And then in the evening you're in the main stage rehearsals and 
chances are you're involved in three or four different little productions going on at a time. And, and that's part of the game is just doing as much as you can constantly to just keep working those muscles. Acting's like anything else. You have these muscles that you need to exercise. Yeah. Um, so that's great that she kept it fun and she allowed you to have input and part of the process. Did she seem to know, though, um, what she was after? Ultimately, yeah, did she have a clear vision? It seemed pretty clear. And even if we wanted to, you know, practice, we want to do this or do that, she'd be like, okay, now I think we should get our costumes. There was still, she was clearly in charge because she would say, well, we, I want to get the costume set so we have those and we don't want to be last minute. So we might want to do X or Y. And she'd be like, okay, let's go do this or whatever, but still in a fun way. So she clearly directed the ship. Like, there was and she got directions. ideas from uh, each of us. Good. Did she... Did she seem to know what the hell she was talking about as far as the scene and yeah, the play? Yeah. Any questions she, she asked, could answer? She kept uh, uh, switching my English. Like, what was it? I'd say, I hate Lord. You know? And then I, I realized, that's where I realized that really Shakespeare, you know, he switches like his funny ways of speaking where you'll be like in faith, but there'll be no end. You know? So I would learn from Tab. Excellent. Yeah, and that you know, and like I say, that's what this is about. Is you learn even even if this had been a horrible experience for you, and I came in here and said that was the worst scene I've ever seen, it still would have been a vital learning tool for everybody. You learn as much from the crap as you do from the good stuff. I mean, when you make mistakes, you learn from your mistakes. And and it's, I mean, and even in this process, you and we talk about bravery. And as an actor, you can't help but make mistakes. Your bravery is all about making mistakes. And as a director, it's all about how do you confront those mistakes and turn them into positive things. And that really is the trick of a director is how do you get, and also making it seem like the ideas are coming from you. And a lot of times that is acknowledging offers that come from you, but maybe they're not exactly what you want. But taking that initial offer and then twisting it around so that it actually goes somewhere else. But you as an actor go, gee, that was a great idea I had there. Because it made the director think of this and made this happen. Um, so again, it's another excuse, you know, not to, don't ever edit your offers. Don't be afraid to get up there and make offers. And I'm, I'm, it's good to hear that Tabitha was open to offers and, and open to letting you have ideas about what was going on up there. It wasn't just, okay, I've studied this play, I know more about it than you do, stand here and say the line, no, don't say it like that, that's wrong. And even at the last minute, there was a couple things you wanted to change. She's like, no, let's just keep it, you know, whatever it was. We didn't want to start experimenting, like, right before, whatever, so she was pretty Good, yeah, because there is a point where you have to say, no, no, yeah. experimentation is over. Now we actually just need to learn it, what we have, and make it as clear and clean as possible. On that note, how was the process for you guys? Did you feel like, did you have enough rehearsal time? Yeah. 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 The, the, even though we had a, like three or like four or five rehearsals beforehand, we still felt like the hour or the hour and a half that we had together was enough time that we were actually able to get through it a few times. And a lot of us were off script, script on our second rehearsal, I believe. Keegan? Uh, yeah. It was simple for me. I only have one line. But, you know, the, you know, don't ever say that to yourself because you learned how vital that one line was, was the one time when you kind of wondered, is it my line or isn't my line? We're waiting for, swear! Uh, you know, never tell yourself, oh, I only have one line. That one line could be the most important line in the whole moment of the play. Um, I understood that. And, you know, I, I just wonder because uh, you look pretty confident what was going on. There were a few kind of like pauses of who speaks now. <laughs> so I just wonder where does that come from and do you think well, if we had done it three more times that that would oh, have disappeared? Yeah, no, if we were to do it again, like we actually, like we missed a few lines um, in a performance with you. I hope that doesn't affect you very much. Oh, well. you failed. <laughs> but, but, um, oh, but we we actually ended up missing a line because the swear came early and the line was forgotten. And, you know, so like we got through it. Well, and good for you. So, yeah. So we like. Interesting because I saw the version we did just before that, and it seemed to be almost flawless to me compared to the second. And I bet it was. And also on the first one, your one line was very powerful. I, at least it, it struck me like. Whereas in the second one, it was not as, as strong and weighty, weighty. 
And it's interesting how that'll happen a lot, actually, that you know, you'll know you rehearse it and rehearse it, it's perfect, it, this yeah. is great, and we get the rhythm, and then suddenly new eyes come in to look at it, or, oh my god, it's yeah. the director, yeah. or, or right. this one counts, all of a sudden this one counts, and, and the pressure's on, and, and we, we it, but like I say, I bet if I made you do it twice more, you would be ripping through it in a million and not even thinking about it. And that's a big part of just the preparation of, as a director. I'm sure you're sitting there going, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! But, um, uh, you could have driven a freight train through that moment. <laughs> and they've nailed it 20 times before, and all of a sudden, what happened in that moment? You realize the importance of every single exchange between people. Mm -hmm. And no, as actors, you're aware because you're up there doing it, be aware of how painful that is for a director out front. When, and at the same time, it's quite humorous as a director when you know we've talked about that moment, we've done it, we've run it 20 times, it's beautiful, and they just fucked it up. And as a director, you, just, you realize that's theater. Like, and it is about, it's only gonna happen once, and it's gonna happen in this moment. And it's all about how well prepared am I, and how, and in this moment, what do I need to, to make it perfect this time? Yeah. And every time is going to be different, and there's different pressures all the time. But I, I, I understand as a director, you sit there and go, there's a moment we missed there. And you're going to sit there and come up to me after and go, well, we did it before. There was this moment that happened, and it was brilliant. And they didn't do it today, but it really was brilliant. Um, I trust that that happens, and I know that that happens. And, and there are always hiccups, and, there, and suddenly there's pressure, and things change. Um, but the important thing is that you guys as actors feel like through the process you weren't being left behind or, or being left to hung out to dry or it's up to you now to get your shit together or you know it really because the onus is on her to make sure that you're prepared to get there no matter what that takes. Amanda? Um, if I, if Tabitha was a director in, like, in the real world and I were an actor that had done a So you trusted her direction and choices, and yeah. you trusted where her ideas were coming from, and yeah. and part of that's good prep. Is they trust you because Thank you know you. the answer. <laughs> that means so much. I'm, all, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, first of all. Yeah. Same. Definitely. Good. So she can answer all your questions. Um, you felt prepared. That's I, good. I, feel pr I felt prepared. I mean, I only had a little while to do it, but I, I did it. So. No, and, and good for you. And that's part of the process, too, is as an actor realizing, you know, how many uh, how many rehearsals do I get? Yeah, right? Before and, you, and you want a rehearsal at least one when you're off script so you can try new things or, you know, do what you have to do. So. And I've been... Uh, and we worked together making sure I had that. So yeah. That's good. And, and it is, that's... After at some point in rehearsal, that just becomes totally the director's job is realizing where are we right now, and what do we need to get done to get there. And sometimes you sit there and you go, all they need to do is learn their lines. Like they know what the scene's about, they just don't know the actual lines. And at that point, as a director, sometimes you just sit down in a room and you go, we're going to run these freaking lines for 20 minutes until we got them. Oh, we're not leaving real. until you got them. <laughs> or do it again. Almost right. Do it again. And, and it's having the patience as the director to sit here and watch it. If I need to watch it 50 times till you get it right, I will. And then I'll make sure that I watch it twice more to make sure that that 50th Stays wasn't right. a fluke, yeah. that you actually know they really do have it. Okay, now we can move on to the next moment. Um, and that's part of the patience of a director is, you know, I want you, she's read the play, she knows the scene inside and out, she's probably got it memorized in her brain already, and she's, 12 rehearsals ahead of you through the whole process and part of it is just reminding yourself no no now back up to where they are mm -hmm. and and put yourself in their shoes and go I haven't read this a million times I don't know this play inside and out I'm here and I need this information to move to the next section I also did a lot of check-ins with them to see if they needed to have a break and yeah, yeah. that's right good yeah I you Want to go grab some water, check over your lines before we run it one more time. And yesterday we were in here, I don't know how many times we did a run through, maybe five or six times. We had a whole hour 
And they're like, nope, we don't need a break. We want to go. We want to go. And I'm like, okay, good. I'm trusting you guys. Do it. Good. Well, Repetition yeah. is a good thing. It's a testament to Tabitha, too, that, I mean, yeah, we're volunteering and, you know, trying to fit our, figure out our schedules and stuff, but we just really wanted to do it for her, yeah. not, you know, so it's not like we were just like, oh, whatever. But well, and that's we a good really quality, too, because you can easily, you know, that's the other thing that can happen in rehearsal is you just piss everybody off and they just don't want to yeah. be there anymore and they stop working for you. Yeah, I, I, exactly. And I wanted to ask you guys, like, why are you doing this for me? You know, because oh, like wanted practice. that's the beauty of being a director, though. And it, it, it's oh, it's yeah. so wonderful, like the time commitment and and input and enthusiasm is just absolutely fantastic. Wait till the day when you get a rehearsal. Someday you'll get a rehearsal with professional actors, and you'll sit back as a director and you go, "Wow." I don't need to work half as hard as I normally work because they're going to do it all for me. Yeah. And as it goes along, you'll just sit there and go, it's amazing how little I actually have to do. And the appreciation of, look at how these people give themselves to these moments. Like, they commit to it. And as you don't have to eke it out of them. You don't have to expl They'll just go up there and give her. And as a director, that's exactly what goes through your mind is, wow, how generous these people are and why are they doing this for me? Yeah. And what it's because I think genuinely in the heart of it, these people enjoy what they're doing. They they like performing yeah. and they they want to do the best they can. And and these guys are here to learn. They want the experience. Yeah. But and it's good that you know as a director, it is your job just to keep that positive momentum and not piss somebody off. And because things are going to go sideways on you all the time. And it's like so and so doesn't show up for rehearsal. It's really easy to, for everybody in the company to suddenly turn on that person, and you fucked up our whole schedule. Um, and you can't afford to do that. It's got to be okay. That's really a, sucks that you did that to us, but we need to move on and keep moving ahead. And and I still need to keep you on my side. Mm -hmm. Amanda, you had said something. Sorry, Amanda. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, I it completely blew my mind. <laughs> what was your process? What? Uh, how did it go down? Like, how many rehearsals did you have? We had four rehearsals. Uh, they were scheduled for an hour each, and sometimes we finished a little bit early. And sometimes uh, I felt that we needed to finish a little bit early because I could tell that they were a little bit fatigued. So I said, "Okay, let's just end it." And you know, everybody else had some things that they had to uh, do in real life as well. So uh, I allowed for that and I said, okay, this is your homework. Uh, I need you guys off book as much as possible by the next rehearsal. At the second rehearsal, um, that's when we did our costumes because I wanted them to have a costume and be in character and be that character and deliver because I know that when I'm in costume myself, my whole attitude switches. I'm not Tabitha anymore, I'm somebody else. So, um, and I think one of you commented on how that was very helpful, I think it was Kim, that it was really helpful to get the costumes early on in the rehearsals mm -hmm. so that we could um, have the characters and portray them. Well, and you know, as a guy, you put on a pair of tights and you feel very different. You feel very different. <laughs> you feel very good sometimes. And it makes <laughs> it makes you move in a very different way. And it and that's a, it's an important thing about a costume sometimes is you and all too often you know and in the real world unfortunately it doesn't work that way because um, they just don't have the costumes until like dress rehearsal or whatever quite often. Mm -hmm. And but what happens at dress rehearsal all the time the director will be working with an actor going they're just not getting it they're not getting it and then they get their costume on. And suddenly they step on stage and you go, they finally got it. And they're an actor who just, they put on that costume and they look in the mirror and they go, now I understand who I am. Mm -hmm. and, and there is something to be said about just play the costume. You feel, when you put that hat on and strap on a sword, you feel different. And you wear tights, you feel different. Um, and that can be really frustrating sometimes. Like, this is what I need, this is what I need, and then suddenly they put on a costume and you see it. Um, actors spend a lot of time kind of fighting against that. They're learning to deal with that earlier on. Like, what, 
what is the mask of this cost of this character? Every character has like a mask they wear, and sometimes in rehearsal you can just like throw a hat at somebody, a random hat. Put this hat on. It's a toque, but you're playing Hamlet. But for some people, it's just I need something to hide behind. Give me something. A pair of dark glasses. It's amazing how when we put dark glasses on, suddenly we have all this power. We're all, everybody's cool when we have dark glasses on, and we're we're unafraid because we aren't going to make eye contact with anybody. You can hide behind that mask, and a costume really is that it provides that mask for you. Um, that's a good offer. Not often does that happen where you get to get into your costume that early and kind of experience that. Mm -hmm. The only way they press that in professional theater is if there's something specific that's going to affect what you're doing. They'll often tell women, uh, oh, by the way, you're all going to be wearing hoop skirts. And most uh, professional actresses actually own what they call their own rehearsal skirts because they know I have to get used to when I run up that flight of stairs, I'm not going to be wearing jeans. I'm going to be wearing a long skirt. So they all start wearing their own skirt to rehearsals. They get used to, I need to pick this skirt up. And the same, you know, they might tell the guy, oh, by the way, men in this day and age used to wear six foot, six inch heels. You'll be wearing six inch heels. We'll get them for you tomorrow yeah. so that you learn how to walk in them. Uh, but unless there's something special like that, generally. But a lot of actors will do stuff like that. Like a guy playing Hamlet might decide, you know, at home, he'll have a vest in his closet that makes him feel kind of like a swashbuckler. Yeah. And you'll notice that actor will just start wearing something on, on their own that'll make them kind of feel like that character. It gives them that feeling. Yeah, Amanda. Um, two things. It's like, I know from experience on this, there's nothing worse than being given your costume and finding out, oh, I'm wearing heels. Yeah, I nobody told me that. I semester. Crap! <laughs> and the second one is that um, part of my reasoning as to why I auditioned this is because I thought she didn't have very many people even auditioning for it. I'd actually met her before she even held her auditions and said she was, she was supposed to have a friend show up and the friend never showed. And I was like, well, I'll be there at your rehearsal for you. And then I came and... Good for you. Yeah. And I want to say to all of you, um, huge kudos just for being there and as actors and working in theater that's the first part is just the commitment level of it and I I thank you and commend you for your commitment level to Tabitha and the project and good on you and thanks good work really enjoyed it thanks good uh, job it was kind of funny because I didn't even know that this that there was a Hamlet thing happening someone just gave me a script and told me to go audition and I did good well do some more and tell your friends Convince other, guys. Okay. convince other Group people to get involved. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you so Good much, job. Guys. What hey, did you do? Did you actually like perform the duties of the stage manager? Yeah. Kept Thank you all. Excellent.